Hey folks, Happy New Year, this is Necro Black, and this is the Necro Black vlog, and it's 2013. My niece is over there on the side. She just looked at me kind of weird, like, huh, but you're Dio. Yeah, I know I'm her Dio, I'm her, I'm her uncle. Don't, don't mind the weirdness of the, of the look of this video, because I, I gotta do certain things in order to have you guys be able to see me in these videos now obviously it's a new year it's a new fresh beginning and I'm you know I want to personally wish each and every one of you guys uh, happy new year a blissful bountiful prosperous and happy and healthy new year and uh, hopefully 2013 will treat you well now, uh, before I do anything, I'm going to do this again. This is literally, li quite literally, like the 17th attempt to record this vlog. I know you guys are probably looking at me like, 17 attempts to record one video? Why? Dear God, why? Well, my sister's computer is great. The camera sucks. As you can tell, I have three lights on me, which if I take the lights away, one, two, and three, you don't see shit. Tuh. If I add this light, and I add this light, and then I add this light, You can see me. Damn it. <laughs> Anywho, before I get started, I want to, before I get started with the vlog and, you know, all the, uh, the first intellectual thing I'm going to be talking about on YouTube in the new year, I, uh, I want to do something real quick. And, uh, that would be something that I did last year on the first vlog of 2012. Which was to wish my girlfriend a happy birthday. Sing happy birthday to her. And before I do that, I gotta set this damn light to stay in place. Alright. Go, go, gadget, TV remote. There we go. Alright. Okay. So before, without further ado, I'm gonna sing happy birthday to my wonderfully beautiful girlfriend who's probably on her way over here right now as we speak cuz she's down in Chinatown doing some getting her hair done at the uh at the salon so before that thorn is 30 yes 30 not 30 got to love 4 year olds my niece over here actually you know what come over here come over here Come over here and don't take the, nudge, off. Nudge the, take, the take the camera. Take 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 the take this off. <laughs> but I need to wear it. You don't need to wear it. But it's not cold. You don't need to wear it. Come on. Take, I'm gonna take, take it off and I'll get cold. You're not gonna get cold. It's not cold in the apartment. <laughs> we live over the boiler. It's not cold in the apartment. <laughs> our, our apartment is always hot. If if you turn on the AC, I'll get cold. Well, we're not going to turn on the AC. It's the middle of winter. Come here. <laughs> All right, so you're going to sing happy birthday with me to Thorn? Yeah. All right. And a one. And a two. And a happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Thorn. Happy birthday to you. And my sister's singing off the side right now. She's sewing. She's doing some stitching on her on a shirt. And this is my beautiful niece, Lydia. How old are you, Lydia? Four. Four? <laughs> Don't mind her. She's a little camera shy. It's all right. It's cool. Go over there. Oh, my flashlight. <laughs> I said I can't do it. Well, I'm going to go. Don't 
Okay, all right. So I did that, and I know she's going to be a little, uh, she's going to be a little bit like, babe. I already know her already. So as you can see, I put the little festive stuff over here and down here. It's a, it's a, we survived the end of the world, thus the little globes over here. And it's a new year, so the little happy cup with the, with the, with the graffiti and stuff over here. And, um, you know what? At, in the last vlog of 2012, in the last vlog of 2012, I spoke about new goals, new dreams, and things to achieve. And you know what? I intend to keep those goals and those those dreams alive and everything. But of course, you know, I'm going through a little bit of a rough of a rough patch. But you know what? Everyone goes through a rough patch, and it happens. It's life. It's it's what happens, you know. Can't get mad about it. Can't get mad at it at all. Because, you know what? Rough patches are what help make a person into the person that they are. Now, I know I've said this before. I've said it in other vlogs and stuff. You know, and I truly believe this. In life, we're we're fated to do things. We're fated to be. We're fated to. Don't mind the noise in the background. That's my niece. We're, we're as you saw, my niece. <laughs> She's playing. Um, we're fated to to do things, to achieve things, to achieve goals. And of course, needless to say, needless to say, you know, we have a final self before we pass on to the next life. That's my personal belief. That's my personal, you know, that's my little mantra thing. Why the hell? Okay, I'm going to use this. There we go. That'll balance. That'll balance the light there. Yeah, remember, like I, I showed you earlier, if I remove this light, I remove this light, and I remove that light, all you see is black. And that doesn't help... It doesn't help that I already have a black shirt on, so I already have a black shirt. I have black hair. Really, 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 it looks like I'm fiddling Look, Mommy. with I'm something else down here, and I'm really just fiddling with this light. I'm making air. That's all I'm doing is fiddling with this light. I'm going to actually, I know what to do. Don't mind me. I'm trying to give you guys the best possible view I can give you but with two LED lights and with a regular with a regular lamp and this camera for some strange reason not being able to pick up light that well this is the best I can do you know oh yeah lambda 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 for my uh, nerdgasm peeps over on Facebook check them out both groups actually there's two nerdgasm groups check them both out they're both really freaking cool um, yeah, so, getting back to the conversation at hand, I personally believe that there is a final self that we reach before we go on to the next life, and in order for us to go to get that, you know, to that final self, to that perfect self, we have to go through the trials and tribulations of life. Now, people don't necessarily understand what I mean whenever I say the trials and tribulations of, the, of, the, of life to go through the final self. Well, the final self is the perfect self. In other words, the the ultimate you. I'll give you a perfect example of what I mean. I'm fat. I'm round. I'm big. I know this. Weird hearing my sister say I'm hot, but okay. <laughs> She's trying to give me confidence. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, you know, it took me years to be comfortable with my weight, to be comfortable with who I am, you know, with me being a big dude and everything. It took me a lot of time to be comfortable with myself. And in order for me to be comfortable with myself, I had to go through through stage after stage after stage after stage at the, at the fall on the face, 
trip and let down and you know things of that sort and even though I, I, I fell on my face and I was let and I let myself down at certain points and everything like that I still got up and I still went and I still tried things and you know in trying things I still managed to, to make something of myself not only in the eyes of others but to myself and the thing that's very important to in, in, in reaching your perfect self is acceptance. You have to be able to accept the good and the bad of yourself. A lot of people don't know that, don't realize that, and can't really comprehend it. You know, I, I have a lot of friends that have self-doubts. Hell, my girlfriend has self-doubts a lot of the time. And it's because of things that happened in the past. You know, the past is a great thing to have, to keep you humble, to keep you grounded, to make, to, to remember the good times and the bad. You know, it's important to have the past there, to, to keep a fresh memory of that. But you can't live in the damn past. You know, you have, yeah, we have, we have video cameras, we have camp, regular photo cameras, we, we have people, you know, uh, we, we, we write, you know, diaries and, and blogs and stuff like that to keep the past fresh and everything but the past is the past we can learn from the past but we can't live in the past we have to live in the now and living in the now is forgetting all the negatives of the past or taking those negatives of the past and utilizing them to make ourselves a better future a lot of people don't don't get that a lot of people don't get that and to be honest to be honest, I, 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 I'm I right now going through a, a rough spot, you know. Just because I'm going through a rough spot, does that mean I feel down about myself? A little bit. And it's because I could make a little more effort towards trying to better things for myself personally rather than just lollygagging and stuff like this. Like right now, I'm, I'm, on, I'm uploading this video to YouTube. Um, cause I tried recording directly to YouTube and, uh, needless to say that went to crap. My niece is in the room, is still in the room, so I can't say the S word. Shite. I'll say shite. <laughs> but, um, you know, honestly, honestly, I, I, I take this as a trial that I have to go through as a person, as a, as an individual, as an adult. It's something that I have to go through, have to experience, in order for me to... Is that... Okay, that's liquid on the screen. Okay. That's something that I have to myself experience as a person in order for me to become stronger mentally and emotionally. To grow as a person. Now, I've grown a lot. Obviously, but um, in other senses, I've grown here. I've grown here. The same mistakes that I made before, I don't make again, and I or at least I try not to because doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again and expecting a different result is it leads to insanity. It, it it is insanity. I forgot exactly who said that. I forgot exactly who said that, but another quote is to, to do things the same way and expect a different result every time is insanity, or at least something to that nature. If you know the answer, you can leave it in the comments section below, and uh, another thing you can leave down below is if you want to wish my girlfriend a happy birthday, her name is Thorn, T-H-O-R-N-E. That's how she spells it. T H O R N E. And you can leave it in the in the comments section right down below. Um, you, you can find my uh, my Facebook fan page, my wrestling page down below. Also, I'll be working on a couple of. I'll be probably wrestling in a couple of shows in the next couple of months, or at least in the next month or so. Um, I'll definitely keep you guys posted on that. But besides that, or another thing that I want to talk, to, I actually wanted to talk about, and uh, you know, hold on a second. 
I am on facey space right now. I call it, me and my friends call it facey space. It's actually, um, it's actually, uh, Facebook and MySpace's name combined. I know it sounds silly, but that's what we call, that's what me and my friends call Facebook. We call it facey space. Now, everyone knows about the terrible tragedy that happened last year in, uh, Newtown, Connecticut. Alright, everyone knows about this. Everyone knows that, uh, there was a disturbed individual that walked into a school and decided to take the lives of over 20 kids, 6 or 7 adults, and it, it's a horrible tragedy. No child should ever have to be buried, especially a child that young. No child should ever have to be buried. It's a, it's a terrible thing. And, you know, the funny thing is that a lot of people are advocating for stricter gun control laws. On one side of it, you know, it's understandable why they want stricter gun control laws. Because you don't want people that are a little screwy in the head to have access to guns. Things that can kill. But the flip side of it, and what people aren't thinking about is... Is that people feel, and, and a lot of people say this, but they don't exactly understand what people mean. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to bring this up. What people don't understand. Lydia, you gotta. Calm it down a little bit, okay? Okay. Alright, baby girl. What people don't understand. Um, Alright. I had to pull it up just so I can give it a better explanation. Um, okay. So, people, on the flip side of it, people are saying that stricter gun control laws would actually regulate, would actually put harsher regulation towards the Second Amendment it would be act would actually go against the Second Amendment rule. And it would disturb it would stop a person from being able to go and and, you know, get themselves a gun legally. It, it would interrupt their right to bear arms. Well actually the thing that a lot of people don't understand about the Second Amendment is that the Second Amendment, while it is there to protect people, where the hell is my mouse? There we go. Here is what the Second Amendment states. The Second Amendment is all right. Okay, hold on. I gotta find. I'm trying to find the actual text that it, that it says. All right. All right. I'm trying to find the actual text. The reason why I'm trying to find it is so I can give a better explanation. Lydia, go over there. Don't mind me, I'm, I'm watching my niece and everything, so... Uh... Blah, 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 Okay. The Second Amendment. Is allowing U.S. citizens... Alright. Allowing U.S. citizens to go and put together a well-regulated militia being necessary to the, sec to the security of a free state the right of the people to bear to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed now what that means is is this in the case i know this took a, quite a few minutes for me to actually find the actual quote from the you know the, the actual amendment if in the case that the U.S. citizens are feeling oppressed, or in the case that there is a need for extra manpower as far as defending this country, defending the freedoms that we have, and defending the rights that we have. U.S. citizens have a right to form a group, their own militia, well-organized and well-regulated militia, 
in order to defend the rights of the people of this country. Now, they are also allowed, in order for them to be able to form this militia, they are also allowed the right to bear arms. In other words, munitions, ammunition, firepower. Because wars are no longer fought with swords and shields. The closest thing to a sword you'll find in a war nowadays is a bayonet and a knife. The closest thing to a shield you'll have is body armor. Maybe the actual, like, bulletproof shields. And, you know, <laughs> bulletproof, uh, bulletproof vehicles. And maybe whatever cover you can get in a, in a firefight. Now, the Second Amendment is there to protect the right of the people to be able to go and be able to form their own militia in the event that it is called for upon for U.S. citizens to go out there and form a group to defend the rights and privileges of the people here, of this country. That's the right, and a lot of people don't seem to understand that that is the case of the Second Amendment. But a lot of people say, oh, well, it, it, it's taking away the, if they if they put stricter gun laws, and that means it takes away the right to do that. No, it only, it only affects half of the Second Amendment. Not the whole. It only affects it, and it doesn't affect it as much as you make it out to. Of course... We already have gun control laws in this. But the thing that a lot of people that are calling for gun control laws fail to realize is the gun control laws don't necessarily regulate people who buy guns illegally or who obtain firearms illegally. Granted, you can go out there and you can arrest a person for having a gun illegally. You can even arrest them for, you know, for the purchase of it they don't even have to use it. You can you can arrest them just for purchasing it. But what happens if you don't catch the person that bought the gun off the, off the drug dealer on the street or bought the gun off the guy who just wants to sell the gun because he needs the money? Your gun control laws, your, your stricter laws, don't mean shite to that guy or to that girl. Your gun control laws don't mean anything because all they have to do is just hide it somewhere in their house, and if the cops come looking for, come looking into their house and come looking for stuff and don't find it, guess what? They won't get in trouble for having an illegal firearm. They won't get in trouble for having a gun on their uh, on their property or having a gun in their possession. If the cop doesn't stop them for having the gun, what can what can those laws do? How do those laws protect you? How do those laws protect your children, your families? I'll tell you how. They don't. Now, a lot of people are, are probably looking at me right now and saying, how could you be an advocate for, gun, for, for people who could own a weapon when this terrible tragedy happened? Look, Newtown was a terrible, terrible, absolutely horrible event. It was. It was heartbreaking finding out that 20 kids who hadn't even reached the age of 10 some of which hadn't even reached the age of eight, passed away. You know, I was I was happy that my niece was around me, you know, that this didn't happen in, in around where she was or anything like that. I was fortunate, and I know a lot of parents out there, you know, feel the same way. A lot of aunts and uncles feel the same way. A lot of grandparents feel the same way. A lot of brothers and sisters feel the same way. But just because an event like this happened, doesn't mean that we should regulate laws that are already set in place to protect the people. Truth be told, it, what it means is that maybe we should take a look at certain things that, that when it comes to the qualifications of owning a, a weapon like that, owning a firearm, Perhaps we should take a look at the qualifications of the person that is, wish, that, that is wishing to obtain ownership of a weapon legally. Now the guy, the gunman, 
got his guns illegally. Why? Because his mother actually owned all those weapons. Now, I know a lot of people are probably saying, well, why does she need an assault weapon? Listen, you know, some people are a little, get a little, you know, offhand when it comes to wanting to get guns and weapons and stuff like that. You know, some people will see, you know, those old 80s, you know, you know, old 80s shoot 'em ups and stuff like that the guy movies of the 80s and 90s and 2000s and say, well, I want that gun, you know, I want this, I want that. Look, I find the Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum a beautiful gun. Too goddamn big. Beautiful damn gun. And I think the AA-12 assault, automatic assault shotgun is a fantastic, mind-blowing weapon. But honestly, if if it came down to it, would I own, would I own those? Not unless I was properly trained and not unless I was told by someone that I can psychologically hold one, which I'm, uh, psychologically I'm not going to be a, a, a nutcase or anything like that, obviously, but if someone found me crazy enough to own, that, that found me crazy enough that I shouldn't own a gun, then I just have to swallow my pride and say, well, I can't do it, you know? There needs to be a, psychi a psychiatric evaluation when it comes to gun control ownership. And that's honestly my take on the entire situation. You want gun control? We already have gun control. You want to prevent things like this from happening? You do a psych evaluation not only for the person wishing, wishing to purchase the gun, wishing to get the license, but you do a psych evaluation for the other people in the household. Because you don't know. Look, look what happened here with, with Newtown. You know, look at what happened with Virginia Tech. Look at what happened with, with Columbine. You know, the people involved obviously had a couple of screws loose. And that's my girlfriend calling me. Whatever. I'm going to take this call during the vlog. That's her ringtone, yes. Hey, babe. Hey. Hey, what's up? Okay, cool. Yeah, I know, I know. No bueno. I'm probably not going to like it. No bueno, I'm probably not going to like it. You don't like anything. I do. You don't like anything. Yes, I do. What um, do you like? I like a lot of things. I like you. Yes. Um, babe. Uh -huh, whatever. Anyway, are you on your way this way? Yeah. Alright, well, I'm still in the middle of, I'm still kind of in the middle of, I'm in the middle of, I'm, I'm in the middle of recording right now. What are you recording? My vlog. Yes. Yeah. I can't pause the video either, so you're, we're, we're kind of talking in the middle of the video. Um, uh, she gonna hate me for having recorded her on 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 speakerphone. She didn't want me to record her on. She didn't want me to to speak to her on speakerphone a lot because she doesn't know who's around or whatever, but. She gonna hate that I recorded on speakerphone while we were talking on the on the vlog. So, damn it, Lent, ill. <laughs> Anywho, um, getting back to the conversation at hand. So, as far as the gun control laws are, we have we already have enough, you know, decent gun control laws already set in place. The thing that a lot of people don't seem to realize is, it, it's not necessarily about the gun control; it's about you know, regulating who can and cannot hold a gun. And in order to do that, I think psych evaluations are the way to go. And we can't only have psych evaluations for the people that are look, that are seeking ownership of the gun. I think, honestly, we need psych evaluations for the people that are around them as well. Because there's always the possibility that, like in, like in the case of Newtown, where you'll have someone in the household who is not mentally stable enough to 
you know, realize right from wrong and go out there and they will find a gun and, and, and find the gun of the person, of the actual owner and use it against them and then go outside and harm people. Taking away the rights to be able to, to protect yourself with firearms is not the way to go. Taking away the rights to do that is not the way to go. That is not, that's, that's not, that's not, that's not the right route, honestly. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that are probably going to watch this video and disagree with me. That's my honest opinion. You are entitled to yours, and I will respect yours. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I will honestly and wholeheartedly respect your opinion. But that's just my opinion. That's how I feel. And I and I know I'm not alone in feeling that way. I know this for a fact. I know this for a fact. I just feel like legislation should be made where, you know, I, I feel like our government should, should, should create some kind of legislation where they change up the rules of the of the gun licensing you know gun licensing rules and regs to actually have to you know or allow for psych evaluations to happen where if a person doesn't go for a psych evaluation or if they can't pass the psych evaluation they are not a lot legally allowed to have a firearm to go okay because honestly, that's the best way to prevent a lot of these school shootings and a lot of these other shootings and stuff like that. As far as you know, legally, you know, whatever. And even though while my while my idea is a good idea, it's still not gonna stop people from purchasing guns or anything outside illegally or anything. But it will help a lot, or at least I feel it would help a lot. You know. Personally, I'd like to sit down with President Obama or Vice President Biden or, or House Speaker um, Boehner and talk to them about, you know, rules like that, you know, personally. But I'm just a simple YouTuber. I'm just a simple guy that, you know, has a channel on YouTube and stuff like that. And it's, stuff like that's not going to happen with me. So, <laughs> But if it did, that'd be pretty freaking cool. That would be pretty freaking cool. Uh, and as you guys already heard, Thorn's on her way over this way, so <laughs> that's going to be kind of funny. Um, Alright, one other thing I wanted to speak about. One other thing I wanted to speak about. I'm going to talk about it. I've been saying that I wanted to record a vlog on it, and I wanted to do interviews and stuff like that. Um, you know, talk about Occupy Wall Street stuff like that um okay occupy wall street you haven't really heard about in a while um they i don't know if they're still going on or not um i'm gonna speak briefly about them because honestly i didn't get to do the vlog that i wanted to do i wanted to go out there to uh to the parks where they were at lydia keep it down a little bit okay my niece again, she, she walked back into the living room. Um, honestly, I wanted to speak a little bit about that because of the fact that, let's face it, you know, um, it was a big thing, Occupy Wall Street. And it, it's still technically going on, just I you don't really have people that are going into the, into the parks like that anymore. Um, one park that I used to hang out at, or at least would hang out there every once in a blue, was... Um, Union Square Park down on 14th Street, right in the village, and um, they pretty much closed that up at night. At night, you used to be able to walk into the park and sit down at the benches and just relax, you know, and just hang out, but um, due to Bloomberg wanting to change everything up, it got a little different, so you could only sit in the plaza, which was fine. Then, because of Occupy Wall Street invading Union Square... They closed up the plaza, so you could sit at the outskirts and the and the, the benches that were around the sidewalk. Ah, itchy thumb, itchy thumb. I think I got bit by a mosquito or something. Yeah, it's cold outside, but it's hot in here, so you know, bear with me. Anyway, um, but yeah, so 
they took away they, they only had the benches on the outside and then you still had like some of the homeless kids that were hanging out around Union Square so eventually they took the benches out of the side so that no one would have anywhere to anywhere to sit or sleep or whatever and it's kind of annoying now when I go down to Union Square to go visit and go chill and go hang out or whatever and I can't because the benches are gone and if I go at night and just chill and want to I feel like looking at the looking at the city and just sitting down and relaxing and enjoying the nice crisp air or whatever like that just chilling the bench like this I can't even do that because the benches are gone and the people to blame the unis and occupy wall street listen guys I know you want to you want to represent the 99% here in America I know you want to represent the, the the little man you want to represent the guy the middle class to the lower class the guys that have to pay the most bills, that have to pay the most money towards taxes, while the upper percentile, the upper one percentile, doesn't have to pay that much. But let's be for real. Half of you guys that occupy Wall Street aren't the 99%. Well, you are, but you're, you're the upper 99%. And to be honest, I mean, I understand wanting to help protect people's you know people's money to try to help people that are, uh, are less that you would say are less fortunate or are not in the same pay grade as you but honestly people you know your idea was right but the way that everything played out was all wrong because all they did was make a media circus about you all they did was make a lot of stories about you and then they had people that were trying to make you look bad that worked in law enforcement and we know that they worked in law enforcement because, let's face it, law enforcement is infamous for being utilized to make something look bad. God damn it. Ow. Bad bite. I'm going to stop scratching it. <laughs> I'm going to stop scratching it. But yeah, law enforcement is infamous for making people look bad by doing by doing stuff like that, trying to make them look like they're criminals and stuff like that. And we all know that none of the people there are actually like that, but you have the occasional person that doesn't know what the hell is going on that's just like, well, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to cause trouble, but it's all for this greater good. It's not for a greater good, folks. Listen, if you have no idea what the hell is going on, keep your ass out of the situation. You know what's going on? Cool. By all means, protest. Voice your opinion. Let the people know what you stand up for. But if you have no... If you don't have an iota of what's going on, please stay the... F My niece is out of the room. Stay the fuck away from... <laughs> stay the fuck away from what's going on and leave it to the people that know what the hell is going on it's all right to go and support something if you feel that you can support something that you 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 if you feel like eh, bug little buggy that was up there anyway if you feel if you feel that you are if you feel you know some sort of connection with the people and you can comprehend with what's going on by all means support it but please if you don't know what's going on you're always going to wind up like the, like some of the people that are that have been featured on YouTube that have that that have been protesters at Occupy Wall Street and didn't know what in the hell they were protesting they were just there don't be that idiot don't be that moron please leave it to the professionals do like I do. Listen, I, I knew some of the things that they were protesting about, but I didn't know everything. So I didn't take my ass down to down to this park and, and bring sleeping bags and changes of clothes and all the money that I had and, 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 you know, left everything that I had behind so that I could sleep in a park because I felt like this was the way to protest. No, it's not a way to protest. It's one way of protesting, but it's not the best way to protest. You want you want to know what was a gr what's a great way of protesting? Doing stuff like this, like the vlog. You know, putting out actual web logs, putting stuff out on the web, printing out flyers, taking out ads in the newspaper. 
make an app for for Android and and and, I, and Apple phones, things of that nature. You have to think before you do. That's a great way to get your message out. Not standing out in the street yelling, "Hell no, we won't go." That doesn't always work, especially when you're not protesting one specific thing. All you're doing is causing a nuisance. And what happens with a nuisance event? You know, sometimes people will get annoyed enough where they'll be like, all right, all right, all right, we'll give you what you want. But in the case of Occupy Wall Street, it was like, all right, all right, all right, what the hell do you want? Don't say it, don't take it as me not supporting Occupy Wall Street and what they stood for. I did, I, I, I did. You know, I, I I supported some of what they what they stood for, but a lot of their actions were just questionable. You know, but even more questionable was the actions of law enforcement, and what, you know, what a lot of the elected officials in all these different states were doing to to the Occupy occupation, not just Occupy Wall Street, but Occupy Wisconsin, Occupy this place, Occupy that place. <sighs> The only thing I occupied was my living room and the parties that I went to and occupied the sp a spot in front of the TV where I watched the news or I read the news or I was in front of a computer and I was reading up and learning what was going on, becoming wiser to the situation and thinking of ways that you could possibly try to, try to make the situation better. That's the proper occupation. Not just sitting on the street. Of course, again, my opinion. But this is why I wanted to go out and interview m members of the Occupy Wall Street occupation. And still do, if it's still going on. And if, if you know where it, it might be, please, in the comments section below, please leave where I could go so I could take my camera and go out there and record interviews and make this vlog that I wanted to make for such a long time. <laughs> honestly but all right. or if you'd like you can leave a response video to this video and you know say your points maybe you don't like what I'm saying maybe you agree with me please feel free to say whatever the hell you want in the comment section of this video and state your case well I've been speaking for about Forty mm, something minutes. So, it's time for me to cut this vlog off. So, until next time, this is Necro Black, the beastly one, the F six six party animal, and still, even though I hard I, I hardly visit the site like that anymore. VF's favorite luchador, and one of Facebook's many luchadors. And I'm out. Peace. Happy New Year. Wait, 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 one more thing. Like I said, if you have anything that you want to leave in the comment section below, and if you want to wish my girlfriend a happy birthday, comment section below, below the information section. All right? Adios. Pieces.